housekeeping before we dive too far into this whistle. First things first, I bought this. Uh, this is not some sort of endorsement deal. This is not an ad. I emailed Gary and I said, I need a G whistle, low G whistle. Do you have time and how much would it cost? And I sent him a check and he sent me a whistle. Item number two, this should be pretty far down the list of whistles you're gonna buy after you get that first high D whistle. It's really more of a luxury item and that's why it was the last whistle that I bought. That being said, let's have a tune on it and hear how it sounds. It's got a really nice, soft, sweet sound, a lot like my F whistle, which I've mentioned on this channel a few times, is my favorite one to play. I have a feeling this will be edging it into uh, a competition as far as practice time. I'm gonna be using this one a fair bit more, just putzing around. Physically, it falls in between the A and the F whistles, which means you've got a couple of options as how you wanna hold it and actually play the instrument. You can do fingertips, uh, as you would on a smaller, higher pitched whistle. You can also do the, high, the Piper's grip. I'm doing a bit of a hybrid myself, where I've got my bottom pinkies down here and everything is kind of falling across, but it's not quite as extreme as you'd get on the lower the low F or certainly a low D whistle. My advice there would be to try it both ways and see what fits the best. I like playing across on this type of whistle. It just fits me better. But if you do find yourself with one of these, try it out both ways, see what works. Whenever I get a new whistle, I do like to check tuning against my very unscientific, fairly lazy iPad app tuner. Let's just see how we do here. First octave is very solid. Not that I would have expected anything else. That's, you know, it's a professional instrument. Let's check the second octave here. Drill, but it works, it's in tune. Again, would have been surprised to find anything else. Now, one cool thing about Gary's whistles is that he always marks the correct tuning position with a notch. If you take the head joint off, hopefully I can get a close-up shot on here, he engraves this line. That's the correct position of the head joint when the whistle is warmed up. That's when it should be in correct tuning. Um, if you're not warmed up, you're gonna have to adjust that a little bit, but as far as I can tell, pretty accurate. Now that we got that out of the way, let's compare physically between some of the similar models. These two on the ends here, the F and the A, that are sandwiching my new G whistle, I got these probably about five or 10 years ago. I've, I've had them for quite a while, but you can see that his design has stayed pretty uniform. They all look basically identical. They all sound identical. They all sound great. They sound fantastic. So then the question is, why now? Why did I wait so long to get one of these? And why is it important now? Well, the reason why I waited so long is because it doesn't really give you anything you can't already get from another whistle that you probably already have, even if you're just starting out. This whistle easily gives you the key of G, gives you the key of C, and it gives you the key of D. Now, you get the key of D in the hardest possible way to play it, what we would call A fingering on a D whistle. You get the key of G in what we would call D fingering, which is fine, interesting, but you also already have that. Then it gives you the key of C and G fingering. And if you already have a C whistle, it's not really giving you anything new. However, the reason why I got this and the reason why I was so excited was because it gives you the key of C with a few extra notes below. And in that case, I really needed those notes for one specific song that we did called the Lakes Poncha Train. I originally recorded the song on my C whistle, and here's how I did it. Nothing inherently wrong with that. However, you have to jump the octave a couple of times. And if you're not used to that, if the listener is not used to that, it sounds a little strange. Compare that to on the G whistle, what we can do now. Because you have those extra four notes below the tonic, below the one, the C in this case, you have some more flexibility that you wouldn't have had if you were playing the C as the lowest possible note. And that's why I got it. And 
you might be thinking to yourself it seems a little silly to spend some money on a brand new whistle for one song. Not the first time I've done that, unfortunately, but you'd probably be right. However, I think I'll be able to work this into a lot of other stuff. That's going to be my goal, is, is finding ways to incorporate it because it is fun to play, and it gives a bit of a fresh look to a lot of songs that I'm used to playing a different way. If I'm used to playing, say, in the key of G, I'd be starting from here. It gives me some other ways to think about those tunes, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. So let me know what y'all think of this whistle. Does it sound good to you? If you're interested in one, uh, definitely inquire with Gary. I'll put his link in the comments below. Check it out. I would strongly advise you not to make this your first whistle. <laughs> Start with a high D whistle and experiment from there and see what sounds good to you and see what whistles might fit the tunes that you want to play or the songs that you're looking to play. And uh, yeah, check it out, see what you think, give Gary a shout, let him know I said hi, and I will see you all on the next one. Cheers. Take care.